Welcome back folks to another video tutorial focusing on the topic of chemical equilibria. And this is the third in our mini library of video tutorials on this topic. And so far we've already talked about the general equilibrium constant and then we talked about the solubility product. The next three video tutorials are largely going to focus on acid and base scenarios. And we're going to start out by talking about the water self-ionization constant KW. So KW serves as a nice introduction to two other equilibrium constants, Ka and Kb. But before we look at those any further, we should remind ourselves about the idea of pH or pOH and acid-base concentrations. A solution which is said to be very acidic chemically speaking, has a very large value for H3O+. We often talk about having a large H plus concentration. Actually, when protons are in solution, they bind very readily to water molecules. So you're far less likely to find an orphaned proton floating around in solution, but you're far more likely to find H3O plus as your uh, cationic species. So when we talk about acid, we're really talking about the concentration of H3O+. We often talk about how acidic something is by quoting the pH of the solution. The pH of a solution is determined using the equation that you can see there. It's the negative log base 10 of that H3O plus concentration. Conversely, very basic or very alkaline solutions have very small values for H3O+. At the same time, very basic solutions have very large values for OH-. So for all intents and purposes, what we're really talking about here are protonated water molecules or deprotonated water molecules. Let's have a quick look at doing some of these transformations from H3O plus or OH minus concentrations through to their respective pH values. And it's really just as simple as subbing these values straight into the formula that you can see here. If I just bring up a little bit of ink and we'd better go to my favorite blue color. The pH, uh, well, the question is, if H3O plus equals 2.0 times 10 to the minus 2, what is the pH? So we'll use our nice simple equation here where we say that the pH equals the negative log base 10 of the H3O plus concentration. That was simply given to us in the question. It's 2.0 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per litre sub that into the equation and you should get a value of 1.7. If you don't know where the log button is on your calculator, this is probably a good time to discover where it is. Now notice that the pH value is dimensionless. It does not have units. So you saw that that was a very low value for pH, um, 1.7. We saw that the H3O plus concentration, 2 times 10 to the minus 2, well what about the H3O plus um, concentration of 2 times 10, the minus 12? In other words, more than a billion times less concentrated. What is the pH of that solution? So let's have a look and see how that might change. We can skip the first line. I think it's the log base 10, 2.0 times 10 to the minus 12. So a much smaller value. Plug that into your calculator and you should get... 11.7. Okay, this is interesting. So as the H3O plus concentration decreases, the value for pH increases. Okay, and actually that's probably something that you already knew. It's, it's really common knowledge even in society that low pH values mean something is very acidic. And as you get up towards a pH value of about 14, that's when something's becoming very alkaline. So very basic solutions have small values for H3O+, but they also have very large values for OH-.
The pOH of a solution is determined using the following equation, and you should find that looks pretty familiar. And perhaps now you're seeing where the pH and the pOH labelling comes from. Um, but uh, anyway, it's really just as simple as, as subbing these values in. If I gave you a question which looked a bit like this, if the concentration of OH minus, we call this hydroxide, equals 2.0 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per litre, what is the pOH? Sub that into your equation. Oops, you should find that number looks pretty familiar, and you might even be able to guess without using the calculator. Sure enough, that equals 1.7. Okay, so if something is very basic or very alkaline, we already knew it had a large value of pH, in other words, up near 12, 13, or 14, but its pOH value is actually right down near sort of 1, 2-ish. Actually, there's a nice little relationship that we can always use between these two values, and that is that the pH plus the pOH equals 14. It always equals 14. Well, at 25 degrees Celsius anyway. It changes slightly as the temperature changes. That's a handy little relationship. So from this, you should be able to deduce that the pH of the solution quoted above would be 14 minus 1.7. It'd be 12.3. Just as we would expect. Something which is very basic has a large pH value. No matter how acidic or basic a solution is, there's actually a constant relationship between H3O plus and OH minus. And I guess that's really reflected in the equation I gave you on the previous page, which was the pH plus the pOH always equals the same value. Actually, if we focus on the concentration of those two species, we can see that that gives us a constant value. And that brings us to Kw which is an equilibrium constant. At 25 degrees, the Kw value um, for water, so the product of the H3O plus and OH minus concentrations is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So if we know the value for H3O plus, we should always be able to determine the concentration of hydroxide and vice versa. So if I gave you this question here, if OH minus equal 2.0 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per litre, what is H3O plus? Okay, if Kw is the product of these two things, and in this question, what am I looking for? I'm being asked, what is the concentration of H3O plus? I'll just rearrange my equation, which would mean it looks a bit like this. And I should probably find I get something which looks a little bit like, um, hang on a sec, I've done this around the wrong way. It's an amateur mistake. See, I could edit this out, but I don't, I don't like to edit out my mistakes because it shows you the kind of rookie mistakes that everyone makes. Even a rookie like me, I had my equation the wrong way around. Glad I noticed that before we went to press. Sub those numbers back into the equation. Whoops. I'm off my game. Ah, this is looking much better. 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 2.0 times 10 to the minus 2. And, oh, I don't have my calculator in front of me. I think that equals something like that. Mm. Let's hope there's no more embarrassing mistakes. 5 times 10 to the minus 11 moles per litre. That's a really small number. Does it make sense? You, know, you should always sort of rationally check the values you get. Okay, if we go back to the OH value, it was mm, 2 times 10 to the minus 2. That's pretty basic. You know, that's a pretty high concentration of OH. In other words, it's a very alkaline solution. What's my concentration for H3O plus? Well, it's a really small number, and that's what I would expect. I think I might have got that one right. 
That's enough for KW for now. Move on to the next couple of video tutorials and we'll talk a little bit more about Ka and Kb, the acid and base dissociation constants.